Okay, so normally this isn't really the kind of thing that warrants a video. Oh, a guy gets put on waivers. We're not talking about the new team that acquired him or waiting until the day he is sent and cleared or whatever. We are making the video the day he gets sent down. This situation in particular is so distinct from every other, oh, this player gets sent down on waivers, we'll wait 24 hours to see if he gets claimed kind of situation, because when it comes to Michael Delzato of the Ottawa Senators, or soon to be, I guess, of the Belleville Senators, or soon to be of any other NHL team that decides to claim him, there is some very particular discourse going around about this guy that brings up a whole bunch of different concerns outside of the entire waiver situation. So, just in case you hadn't been keeping up, yes, Michael Delzato, an Ottawa Senators signed defenseman who was acquired earlier on in this offseason, has been placed on waivers this morning. Now, whether or not he gets claimed or not, I don't know. And frankly, I don't even really care too much. That's not really our topic of today's video. To be honest, I actually am planning out the weekend's worth of videos because I am going on a trip, and Michael Delzato was a video topic that I had coming up later in the weekend. But because the guy got placed on waivers today, we're moving everything to today and talking about this guy. Who exactly is Michael Delzato? You've likely heard the name before. He's a 31-year-old left-handed defenseman, 6 feet 194, who was signed by the Ottawa Senators to a $2 million AAV contract till the end of 2023. So, a short two-year deal after playing a boatload of time in the Philadelphia Flyers systems, Vancouver Canucks system, then he was traded over to Anaheim, St. Louis went back to Anaheim, went over to Columbus, and then was a free agent before being acquired by the Ottawa Senators. And it was kind of funny, because when he signed his $2 million contract, a lot of people looked at that and said, okay, this guy went from $700,000 to $2 million because Pierre Dorian went out there and gave him that money. Kind of gives me shades of the Vancouver Canucks when they signed this guy to a $3 million AAV contract for two seasons back in 2017. That was part of the quintuplet signings, I believe, that Benning pulled off alongside of guys like, I think it was like Patrick Weirkoch and Anders Nielsen and Sam Gagne and Burmistrov or whatever it was. Yeah, that offseason. It was a bad one for Vancouver. But Del Zotto was not really all too great of a defenseman in his second year in Vancouver. Four points, 23 games played. His defensive play really did drop off considerably. He was traded over over to Anaheim for Luke Shen and a draft pick. Despite the fact that last season with Columbus, Delzato actually produced pretty okay. 13 points, 53 games played. His reputation amongst the league was that he was just a replacement level defenseman who could play some pretty okay minutes and not really be, you know, the biggest cog on your decor, but just a guy that's going to be there. And in Ottawa, sure, the guy was going out there producing a ton, 6 points, 10 games played. But the 10 games played is where things really start to get finicky. Because even though Delzato wasn't like Shabbat level on the Ottawa Senators, he still was considered to be better than guys like Victor Mete, some said he was better than Josh Brown, some said he was better than Zaitsev. And even though he was sort of better than these guys, he just didn't really play all too much. This is where we get into our nitty-gritty details. When Delzada was put on waivers, this is what NHL Rumors Daily said on Twitter. Not a surprise here. The story runs deeper than ice time. NHL Rumors Daily, by the way, is the guy who tweeted out all that crazy stuff during the offseason last year, where he predicted, like, everything. Tyler Toffoli to Montreal, and the contract and all that. He had all these different insider scoops, and he leaked them before... Saravelli and Friedman and LeBron and Drager all got to it. So the guy who runs this account, he's got connections, and we've kind of established that over the past calendar year. He also says here that Delzato didn't truly mesh in Ottawa and that he'll land somewhere else. This is why I wanted to make a video about Delzato earlier before this waiver thing even happened. We had ourselves a tweet back on December 9th from Paul GB. This is the guy who actually made a tweet about Delzato coming to Ottawa before the contract was actually signed. I'm told there has not been a formal trade request from MDZ, but he's pissed off that he's not playing. Not shocking for a player who was brought in at that money on a two-way deal to be dissatisfied with playing time. He was probably expecting to play a bigger role. NRD quote tweeted this tweet, and he said, I can confirm this unique report. I wouldn't be surprised to see Michael Delzato on the move for a multitude of reasons, and quotes are on the multitude, meaning that the multitude is probably the word that was used when he was informed of this information. A reply here says, the guy's a locker room problem, he's liking videos on Instagram of his teammates getting beaten on goals. Good. I hope he leaves soon. 
Now, linked is a screenshot of the NHL Instagram account when they posted the JT Miller video where he just McDavid did the entire Ottawa Senators decor, gets by Mete, gets by all the guys, and then he scores. This video was liked by Michael Delzato, the guy who is the teammate of Mete and all the other guys that Miller ended up deking out. And in fact, we have another liking of the tweet over here just from a few hours ago. So after Del Zotto on waivers was posted by Friedman, Ian Mendes quote tweeted this, This move will lead to a lot of questions being asked. Most notably, why did the Senator sign MDZ to a two-year contract this summer and then essentially phase him out here before Christmas? Wheeler replies, Apropos of nothing, the Sens have three of the six worst average game score defensemen in the NHL, and none of them are named Michael Del Zotto. And those three defensemen are Victor Mete, Brown, and Lassie Thompson, so yeah, some of the worst defensemen in the NHL when it comes to game score. This tweet right here calls out how Michael Del Zotto is not one of the worst guys. Guess who liked this tweet? Michael Del Zotto himself is right there. Athlete, part-time DJ, children's cancer advocate, yada, yada, yada. He's got the check mark. He liked this tweet. So there has to be something going on behind the scenes here. A defenseman that you committed a significant amount of money and cap to, going out there and not playing after producing a decent amount of points, going out there and not playing despite the fact that Mete, Brown, and Zaitsev are out here playing worse than the quality that he was able to provide. He's liking Instagram, Twitter posts about how his team is bad, and we have reports coming out by people who are sort of on the underground of the NHL insider world. These aren't the Friedmans or the Merricks or the Dragers going out here saying these things. It's guys who have proven that they have connections elsewhere within other parts of the league, saying that Del Zotto is pissed off and that there are a multitude of reasons why the Senators might want to get rid of this guy. What those reasons are? I don't know, but the guy's on waivers today, and from the looks of it, it appears that he's kind of okay with that, based off of the fact that he's liking tweets about how his team is pretty bad. This was just from a few hours ago, this Wheeler tweet that MDZ ended up liking. It's kind of funny, isn't it, how social media can play such a big role in kind of dictating how we feel about these things? Because... You know, I get it. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, we had no Instagram. We had no Twitter. 10 years ago, we probably did. But like, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have teammates who could sort of subliminally sabotage their reputation with the fans and the team by associating themselves with posts where the team they're on is doing poorly. Like, I know Ottawa isn't really the biggest NHL market comparative to, like, Toronto or Vancouver, for example, but I can tell you, if anybody on the Vancouver Canucks liked a social media post about the Vancouver Canucks being bad, like, when they were on that losing streak, losing all these games, oh, they've got the worst penalty kill in the league ever since the penalty kill stat was even tracked, if somebody who was on the PK, like a Tyler Mott or somebody, liked that tweet, that would be larceny, like, oh my goodness, what are you doing? Why are you, in a way, validating this kind of content? Why are you going out there and saying, oh, wow, great, I like that. That's a favorite for my books. You could say, oh, Lego, you're overreacting. It's just Twitter. It's whatever. But, like, when your name is on there and you are an NHL athlete playing at the top league in the world and you're using this as a way to sort of, in a way, subliminally express how you're feeling about that, haha, <laughs> I like it. Mete got beat. JT Miller, what a great goal. I'm going to like that video. It kind of gives a little bit of a bigger indicator as to how your feelings are just in totality. Which is why the tweets and the insider information that we have had that sort of corroborate those claims makes it a lot more interesting when you see, okay, he's on waivers now. And now, like, I mean, there's no real reason why he should not be playing over Victor Mete. Mete is just, yeah, <laughs> you get the idea, right? Mete hasn't really been all too great this season. So, talk to me in the comments, what do you think about Michael Del Zotto and the entire thing over here with the waivers, as well as the social media posts, the insider information that says, okay, maybe the guy's kind of upset with how he's not being played, not to mention the fact that this guy went out there, signed a two-year, two million AAV contract with the Ottawa Senators, only to not be played, despite the fact that the guys that are playing ahead of him are some of the worst defensemen in the league, statistically speaking. Let me know in the comments all your thoughts and opinions. I hope you enjoyed this video. And... Bye.